Today, I am here to talk to you about conscious thinking. This is the pathway to success. It is a phenomenal topic. I have had the opportunity to work with some of the most successful people in the solar business, some of the most successful salespeople in the solar business. There's a new trend in solar, and what we do is, is we actually take usually young guys, put them in a neighborhood, and these guys within three to six months to a year will be making a half a million dollars a year or much more. I have met multiple people who can do this. You can put them in any new neighborhood that's viable for solar, and within three to six months, they're making half a million, a million dollars a year. Now, this is in the context where 99%, 97 to 99% of the people struggle to make a living. There's that one or 2% that have mastered the, the conscious thinking. And, and this, is, this, is a, this is a job where constant rejection. You're gonna get rejected a hundred times more than you're gonna get yes. This is a job where they have to get up at six in the morning in the cold, work all day and all night. This is hard, difficult work, yet they are able to do this anywhere, anytime. These people are conscious thinkers. Okay, so conscious thinking is an absolutely humongous topic. It might take a couple of encyclopedias to really dig deep into conscious thinking and thoughts. We have neuroscientists now, we have philosophers, we have psychologists, we have neurophysiologists, we have neuropsychiatrists. They're all trying to understand the, the ideas and concepts of thought. So what, but we're gonna make some major progress today because what I wanna do is, is I want to get you started on this journey and we can make tremendous progress because what we're gonna do here is, is we're gonna actually redirect the movement of your thoughts. The creative process is a process of thinking. And what we do in the creative process, is we take an idea and turn it into a physical reality. How we do this is, is we do this through thinking. We do this through our thoughts. And what we want to do is, is our brain is really good at it, is maintaining equilibrium. Let me say this again. Your brain is fantastic at maintaining equilibrium. It's, it's good at taking the images, beliefs, and ideas in your brain that you have right now and keeping a balance in your life. And equilibrium is great because if life continued to change constantly, 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 you would go crazy. Now, we are in the age of transformation. You have to accommodate and be better with change, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. But today's, these couple of three lessons are going to transform the whole movement of your thought. There's three principles I want to talk about. We want to learn about self-talk. And there's two types of self-talk, limiting and advancing. So that's subject number one. Number two is questions. Now, we have all know about questions. It's so important. I want to mention it briefly. And then section number three is we're going to create a new context for your concepts and belief. Concepts are what you think about the world. Beliefs are what you believe about yourself. But let's, let's talk about a couple of principles before we go into those three, three topics. Principle number one that's really important in conscious thinking is that your brain has no lag phase. In conscious eating, we talked about getting up, going out and getting a bag of potato chips, and all the time it takes from the, the idea of getting a bag of potato chips to actually sitting at home and eating them. Physical habits have a long lag phase. There's a lot of time for you to think in between, but thoughts are immediate. They come into your brain, self-images, that they are so automatic in every sense of the word. They just pop into your head second after second. And so we have to actually break into your thoughts in real time. There's a great uh, enigma, puzzle, conundrum with thoughts. When you're a scientist, what you do is, is you use an instrument to study something. You use a magnifying class to study a bug, you use a microscope to study a bacteria, a telescope to study the stars, and now they have these advanced atom smashers to study atoms. What do you use to study your thoughts? You have to use your thoughts. Now, 
The very act of observing your thoughts changes them, so you're trying to study something that's always moving that's at least as smart as you are. Have you ever talked yourself into something, out of something, with your thoughts? You outsmarted yourself? All I want you to start with today is start to observe your thoughts because you got to do it in real time because there's no lag phase. And what I guarantee you is, is you will have tremendous insights when you start to observe those thoughts. Part two, conscious thinking. What we want to do today is talk about self-talk. Talk about self-talk. I love this topic because this is the front line. This is the beginning of how you transform the way you think. Remember we talked, we talked in the last lesson that thoughts have no lag phase. Meaning physical habits, the idea of eating a bag of potato chips to the actual physical act of it, there's a long lag phase. There's time between the idea and the actual practice. With thoughts are in real time. So we need a tool, an effective tool, that we can watch our thoughts in real time and really learn something in a predictable, quantifiable way. The other thing we talked about is that your brain wants to maintain equilibrium. The movement of your thoughts is always towards your current reality. Right? So, and the way we do that is we do that with our self-talk. We do that with the words and the things we say to ourselves and with conscious speaking, the things we say out loud. So with the self-talk, we're really going to manage this. We're going to learn how to manage this process of thinking. We have this challenge, a proactive challenge in the form of a vision. What does it do? What happens? What happens is, is your brain becomes stimulated. You start to increase the level of your self-talk. And... What we want to start to do is, is notice what our self-talk is saying to us. And here's a principle that will transform your life. Your self-talk is the level of your beliefs, not the level of your potential. Let me say this again in another way. Self-talk, most people misinterpret their self-talk as the level of their, of their abilities or potential. They misinterpret it as something that's trying to protect them, save them, from, from, the, from another failure or the, 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 you know, protect them from this challenge. Now, I used to hate when people said to me, challenges are opportunities. We're going to talk about why that really is true because what these challenges are doing is, is they're helping you, forcing you, cajoling you into a higher level of thinking. And that is really the true benefit of a vision or a challenge is to elevate your level of thinking. You're great at, at, at creating your current reality. A challenge comes in and what, or a new vision, it's gonna increase the number of thoughts. So if once you're aware of this ahead of time, you can be prepared and you're gonna realize that these limiting thoughts, this negative tension that starts to build inside, it's just perfect because that's the level of your beliefs. If you didn't know the level of your beliefs, you couldn't transform them. If you didn't understand what you thought your potential was, you couldn't raise your potential. And that's where we're going with this. So these increased thoughts are normal. They're going to happen. And here's what happens with any challenge or vision. Your Remember I said equilibrium? Your brain is great at keeping equilibrium. What you're doing is, is you're taking your brain out of order to restore order. Out of order into order. A vision is purposely taking your brain out of order, relieve that tension, go back into order, towards the vision, not stuck at your current reality. Out of order, into order, out of order, into order. So, let's, let's look at some practical situations. What do you say to yourself if you're single and you see that really attractive man or woman when you're out? What, are the, what is the internal dialogue that you have? Okay. What if you have a job interview and this job, and you're, 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 you're qualified, but, and this job is double your current salary. What goes through your brain? What is your self-talk? What, what are the limiting thoughts that you have about this? Let's say you have a speech and you've got it in your head that you're 
an upcoming speech, and you got it in your head that you have, um, you're not a good public speaker, all right? All right, well, put that sixth grade book report away and just say, what do you say to yourself in the process of thinking about this? So here's the thing. Self-talk is not your friend. It's your teacher. It tells you the level of your beliefs. What we're going to do is we're going to start to notice our self-talk. We're going to create a new context for it. That is the perfect feedback for the level of your beliefs. It is absolutely not the level of potential. There's another type of self-talk called advancing self-talk. Now, for a lot, some people, when they first hear this, it sounds uncomfortable, like it's boastful. Like, and so if you're uncomfortable with it, consider this. Sir Edmund Hillary was the first man to climb the top of Mount Everest. Now, everybody before him had either failed or died in the process. He had advancing self-talk. He didn't listen to or see any of that other stuff. Roger Bannister, the first man to break the four-minute mile, everybody on the planet, every scientist and expert told him he couldn't do it. Teams have advancing self-talk. NASA. NASA, they said, well, nobody had ever gone to the moon before. Well, that's because our team never tried it. What if you went to your doctor and he said, ooh, that's a tough one. I'm not sure if I can do that. You want to schedule it Friday or Saturday? Okay, what if, a, what if you had a general? And the general was like, you know, did you see those guys? I don't think we stand a chance. No, you, are, you gravitate, you move towards people with advancing self-talk. They are the leaders, and you need to learn to be the leader of your life because self, obviously advancing self-talk and conscious speaking are, are similar because what you say about yourself is true. Whatever you say about yourself is true. So here's what we discussed today. Limiting self-talk is the level of your beliefs, not the level of your potential. And as you start to notice the limiting self-talk, you can easily and quickly transform it into advancing self-talk, okay? And advancing self-talk, when you speak consciously, it makes what you're saying are true, and it will dramatically increase the acceleration of your success. Hello, today we're going to finish up on conscious thinking. This is an amazing recreation. It can transform your life. People who are ultra successful are always conscious thinkers. We learned about self-talk, and self-talk is the tool that we're going to use to start breaking into thought. Remember, thought has no lag phase. It's not like going and getting a bag of potato chips and eating it. There's a lot of time from the idea to the actual act. With thoughts, they're immediate. They pop into your head instantaneously. So what we're going to do today is, is we're going to talk about questions, okay? And we're going to talk about concepts and beliefs. And the tool we're going to use is what we talked about last time is self-talk. Self-talk is the front lines. It's the, the, the vanguard of how you transform your thoughts. Once you start to notice your self-talk, you start to notice your questions and beliefs, which is what we're going to talk about today. And we also learned that self-talk is not the level of your potential. It's the level of your beliefs. Self-talk is not your friend. It's your teacher. Now today, what we're going to talk about is questions, and then we're going to talk about concepts and beliefs. Questions. You've heard this before. You have to ask better questions, you know, these... But let me get a little deeper into it. In my opinion, and we go into this deep into the, in the ultimate secret, and we have some articles on this in the, on um, RDNT website, relationship-development.com. What's wrong is the default setting of your brain. It's the factory settings of your questions. Because for a lot of reasons, maybe some evolutionary to protect us, some... <clears throat> due to society, because psychologists in society call this negativity bias. We have an inclination, a pre-program to ask what's wrong questions. Now, this probably had some survival mechanisms in the past, and quite honestly, more things can go wrong than go right, but in this expanding society, on this journey of expansion, these what wrong questions no longer serve you. What's wrong questions 
are a thing of the past. So what we have to do is, is through our self-talk, start to notice the what's wrong questions that we are asking ourselves. What are some common ones? Why is my life such a struggle? And when you ask that question, your obedient brain, the brain that wants to keep equilibrium, gives you an answer. Why can't I lose weight? It'll give you an answer why you can't lose weight. Why can't I meet the right person? It'll give you an answer why, why you can't meet the right person. And what it does is it plays a terrible, horrible, disgusting trick on you. It actually deepens the problem that the question is trying to solve. Why can't I lose weight? If you ask yourself that question, you're never going to lose weight. Why can't I meet the right person? Because the question is trying to solve a problem, but it's actually creating and making the problem worse. So what we have to do is we have to start to notice through our self-talk what are the what's wrong questions that we're asking. And we want to transform them into how do I meet the right person and enjoy the process? How do I achieve my ideal weight, have more energy, and enjoy the process? These are the questions. And obviously, if your brain is default setting to what's wrong, you have to be proactive. And that's the key because watching your self-talk, limiting self-talk, transforming it to advancing self-talk, and then watching your what's wrong questions is going to really redirect this whole movement of thought. You ought to want to make a list of these disempowering questions. And you want to take that list and transform it into empowering questions and then add twice the number of disempowering questions that you have to that list. So if you have four or five common disempowering questions, transform them and then create another five. They're going to move you in the direction that you want to go. We have resources for you to do this in the Creative Process Workbook that will transform how you look at questions and transform your ability to act proactive, healthy, advancing questions. Well, what's the difference between concepts and belief? They actually overlap, but a concept is what you believe about life. Beliefs are what you believe about yourself. So concepts, the river can never rise above its source. Concepts are the, are, are the understandings you have about life, about your place in life, about what life's all about. So if you believe in a vengeful God, if you believe in a, in a in random, that it was just a random universe, these will all have different effects in your life. The best context for creating concepts about life is a book, it's my new book, it's called The Ultimate Secret. It will transform how you look at life, your place in life, dramatic. What do you believe about yourself? We touched on this in conscious speaking. What we want to do is, is we want to, with our self-talk, start to monitor in more detail, in more depth, what our beliefs are. We want to create a new context for beliefs. And again, the ultimate secret will do that, help you do that. The creative process workbook will help you do that. But we want to create a concept of belief in the fact that we are accelerating. Our life is accelerating. And when you're accelerating, you do not have time to make mistakes. You do not have time to sit on the couch for five or 10 years to, to analyze and transform your beliefs. What you want to do is, is this new context we're going to create for beliefs is, does this belief serve me or does it keep me stuck in my current reality? Is this, is this belief based in reality or is it based in my superstitions. These new beliefs, what you want to do, what you want is, is you want all your concepts and all your beliefs to serve you. If there's anything I know that you can have a happy, fulfilled life, okay, there's nothing that you're not capable of. All right, now you may not be able to play for the Yankees, you may not be able to be a, you know, a fitness model. However, you can have a happy, productive um, life with filled with fulfilling relationships, etc. What you want to do is, is you want to transform the way you think. So we now learned that thinking has no lag phase, so we have to be proactive. The best tool to do that is self-talk. Self-talk is a level of your 
beliefs, not the level of your potential. We now learn that you can transform your beliefs. You want to make your beliefs and concepts consistent with where you want to go. You're never again going to let the limiting beliefs of the past control your future. Finally, you're going to start to ask empowering questions with self-talk. You're going to understand, learn, and eliminate the what's wrong questions that are holding you back. Conscious thinking will transform your life.